Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Eric. Thanks again for watching one of my videos. Today I'm going to show you how to make smoked cured beer can chicken. Now if you've watched any of my videos before, you might have seen the one where I did uh, beer can chicken. But uh, that one was a little different because I didn't cure the chicken. I simply cooked the chicken, put it on the beer can holder, and smoked it. It came out absolutely delicious. This time I'm going to try to cure the chicken. For those of you unfamiliar with curing, it's done with a curing salt, like this Prague powder number one, and you basically inject the chicken using one of these injectors with the cure solution, which is made up of brown sugar, kosher salt, regular sugar, a little bit of pickling spice, and we're gonna let the chicken sit for up to 48 hours in the refrigerator and let these uh, soak in that curing brine mixture as well as me injecting some of the cure into uh, the rest of the chicken to make sure it gets cured all the way around. Now what the curing does to the chicken is changes the chemical composition of the meat. Uh, it turns the, make a, uh, the meat a little pink. If you've ever been to the county fair or you live out here in Southern California and been to Disneyland, you might have seen those gigantic turkey legs you can buy uh, that are like, you know, Fred Flintstone style. Uh, that have that beautiful bronze smoked uh, coloring on the skin and then once you bite into them you'll notice the meat instead of being white like traditional turkey is the smoked pink color and that's what curing does so this is my first attempt to actually cure uh, a chicken uh, i'm really looking forward to see how it comes out i might attempt to do this with a turkey uh, possibly on uh, thanksgiving i might do one of each i might uh, smoke one the traditional way and I might uh, cure one just to see uh, you know, how it comes out so we can have the contrast. So I thought I'd try with a couple uh, chickens uh, this time around just to kind of test the waters and see how it comes out. So let me show you the next step, which is basically how to mix this brine. And I'll show you how to do this in just a second. All right, guys, here we are with all the ingredients necessary to make the brine. Now I'm gonna, not gonna take credit for this brine. This is Pop's brine. For those of you who are into smoking, you might know Pop. He's a famous uh, smoker, barbecuer, who's uh, passed down this family brine recipe. I guess his uh, his dad owned a smoke butcher shop uh, for many, many years, and he smoked uh, and cured many different types of meat using this basic brine method. And it's very, very basic. You first start off, I'm just gonna give you the measurements for making it with one gallon of water. Uh, you can make more, obviously, if you need more. You just want to make sure the ratios are the same, particularly when it comes to this pink salt, because uh, this has sodium nitrate in it. You have to be very careful. Don't use more than you're supposed to, because using too much could be deadly, because um, you know when used safely, it cures the meat, makes it last longer, uh, but if used in excess, it could be very harmful or deadly to you. So make sure you follow this recipe to the T. So the first thing you're gonna start off is with a gallon of water. I just picked these gallon jugs up at the store because they're like 60 cents. This is just regular distilled water. Uh, you can use regular tap water, but some people suggest that some of the impurities in the, uh, tap water can alter the brine a little bit. So that's up to you. You know, if I'm gonna go through the trouble of doing this, I don't mind spending a couple bucks on getting some gallon jugs of this uh, distilled water here. So pour that in there. Now this is the basic recipe. First you're gonna start off with that kosher salt. Uh, you can use anywhere from a third if you're really salt conscious and don't like things salty, all the way up to a full cup. I'm using uh, three quarters of a cup, so not quite a full cup, but three quarters of a cup of regular kosher salt. To that, we're going to add one cup of regular white sugar. We're going to add one cup of brown sugar. Here's where we're going to add one tablespoon of that pink curing salt. I also have one tablespoon of pickling spice. You don't need this for the cure to work, but I'm just putting it in there to add a little flavors. And then last but not least, a couple uh, bay leaves. And that's pretty much it. You want to stir this up until you no longer see 
any salt particles. Now some people suggest that maybe you take the half a gallon of water uh, and heat it up to a boil, which helps facilitate uh, you know, mixing the salt and sugar mixture, it helps it dissolve a little uh, faster. The only problem with that is then you have a hot brine and you never want to uh, inject any kind of meat with a hot brine because then you're going to start cooking it. So I don't mind just giving it some extra stirs at room temperature. It just takes a little bit more time. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Now, as long as you keep it in this ratio, you'll be fine. Whatever it is that you're trying to cure and brine, whether it's uh, a pork or a chicken or a turkey, I mean, you could pretty, or you know, you can use a beef brisket like for making corned beef, whatever you want to do, just make sure you keep these ratios for one gallon of water. Uh, you want to make sure you can also brine bacon, pork belly in this for making bacon as well. You just want to make sure that whatever it is you're making, it's fully submerged in this liquid. Chickens typically take two to three days. Uh, same thing with turkeys. If you're talking about bacon, probably one to two weeks. And then if you start getting into pork shoulders and, and stuff like that, you can go two weeks. And then the beef briskets and stuff, you can go all the way up to, uh, you know, three to four weeks. The hams and stuff like that, you can go much, much longer. But uh, this is all you have to do. So. I'm going to continue stirring this until I don't see any more salt particles and I will show you the next step in just a second. Alright guys, here we are. I took one of the chickens, rinsed it off. You want to put it in some kind of a tray to allow to catch any excess brine uh, because you want to make sure to pour that back into whatever container you're going to store it in the fridge in. Uh, so you just want to take one of these injectors. You can buy this at the grocery store or at like Walmart, Target, what have you. They're pretty cheap. They're usually $5 or less. And you want to take some of that brine solution and ladle it out into a little uh, container here. And then you're just going to back pull and you'll see it'll fill this syringe with the liquid. And as you press it, liquid comes out. So what we want to do now is just to inject some of this brine solution into the bird. Okay, now as far as going into the breast, I always prefer to go under the skin if possible because anytime you pierce the skin with a needle, it just allows an opening for juices to run out and I want to keep some of that uh, obviously inside the bird. So it's pretty easy if you just go on the back end here and lift the skin up a little bit and you can push it in and you'll see as I push in, you can see it's starting to go up and then just kind of keep going out on each side and you'll see you should kind of see it start to puff up a little bit. Don't be too concerned. If some of it drips out, it's going to be inevitable. But we just want to make sure that that brine gets to all sections of the meat. So I'll push it a couple times on each side and just squeeze some of that brine solution. And we also want to kind of do some in the legs. We want to turn it over. I'm just going right under the skin here because I don't want to pierce that skin if I don't have to. You can see it kind of ballooning up, which is exactly what we want. I go under the skin like this. Let's see. And just like so. It's not that complicated. So I'm going to go ahead and finish injecting these two birds and then I'll show you the next step in just a second. Alright guys, I finished injecting uh, the second bird. Now I picked up this plastic canister which is perfect for being able to submerge these underneath the brine and to keep it in the fridge for the next couple days. Uh, you just want to make sure it's a non-reactive container. You can use plastic, you can use glass, you don't want to use any kind of metal that could have a reaction with the curing process. Stainless steel, they say it's okay, but make sure there's no metal, uh, like a copper or anything like that. So just take the chickens, stick them in here. I'm going to try to arrange them so they kind of get a little water in there. You want to, like I said, make sure you take any excess because we want to keep that ratio exactly the way it is. If we don't keep all that curing salt in there, it's not going to have enough. Take that 
And let's see, I don't know if a gallon's going to be enough. I might have to mix up another gallon. We'll see here. You know what? Almost submerged. I'm going to mix up uh, eh, probably another half a gallon just to make sure this is completely covered. Now what you want to do when you put this in the fridge too is every day or maybe every 12 hours, once in the morning, once in the night, go in there, kind of move the chickens around, flip them around, just a, a allow all that meat to be submerged in the water at one point so it could soak in this brining and curing solution. So I'm gonna fill this up so they're completely submerged. I'm gonna put the cover on it. I'm gonna put it in the fridge and we will be back in a couple uh, days uh, when I take this out and get ready to put them on the smoker. All right, guys, how you doing? We're back. It's been 48 hours. Now, ideally, I would like to kept these in for three full days, but I'm uh, up against the time restraint because uh, I got to go to work tomorrow and I'm not going to be able to uh, cook them tomorrow. So I'm going to cook them a day early. Um, ideally, you would like to give them three full days if you can. You don't really want to go too much longer than that you could go four days but if you go longer than that the chicken is really going to start absorbing a lot more salt and it's going to be a lot more salty so uh, ideally three days you know anything two days and plus will work as well so i've taken these out of the brine solution i've rinsed them uh, very well with cold water and now you just want to make sure they're completely dry so you just kind of want to lay them out of some kind of pan to collect some of the water and you just want to flip them around and you want to dry them off both inside and out. Uh, the smoke is not going to have a good time adhering to the chicken if it's wet. So this is a very important step. We want to dry this off. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry these off really well, both of them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick them in these uh, racks in the refrigerator uh, for a minimum of an hour. If you can go longer, I mean overnight uh, would even be better because that will assure that all the moisture has completely uh, been taken out of the chicken and then they'll be nice and cold and ready to uh, accept some of that smoke in the smoker. So like I said, I'm just going to dry them inside and out. I'm going to put them in the fridge for around an hour and then we'll be back and I'll show you the next step. All right, guys, while we're letting that chicken cool off in the fridge, it's a good time to get your wood chips soaking in some water. Uh, me personally, for chicken, I love a 50-50 combination of apple and hickory. Apple wood by itself, which is my favorite for smoking, is very mild, recommended for fish. It's very good for poultry as well. The only problem is sometimes it doesn't have enough of a smoky kick to me. So adding the 50% hickory kind of really balances it out so it's a nice, light, smooth, but yet strong smoke, which, you know, which I like. So you feel, you can experiment, feel free to try different types of woods. I would recommend any type of the fruit woods, uh, cherry, pecan, uh, you know, anything like that. The, some of the other stronger woods might be a little overpowering for poultry. While we're waiting for that to soak and while we're waiting for the chickens to cool off in the fridge and dry off, I'm going to enjoy an adult beverage like I do in most of my smoking videos. And today I'm trying something different. It's a nitro white ale, which is made by the Boston Beer Company. They're most famously known for Samuel Adams, and they're out of Boston, Massachusetts. And these, these are pretty unique. They just came out with these not too long ago. And the reason they call them nitro, it's actually referring to the type of gas that they use in the carbonation process while they're making the beer. It's 70% nitrogen and 30% carbon dioxide. Uh, the unique thing about this, normally I enjoy beers out of a glass bottle. I'm making an exception in this case because you really need it in a can. Because what's different about this, there actually is a restrictor plate inside this can. So when you pour the beer into a glass, it's forced to go through tiny holes, which creates a very unique effect when you pour it in a glass. Uh, the process causes little bubbles to rise up from the bottom and make a really nice, smooth, creamy head. So let me show you what I'm talking about. And listen when I open this up. Listen to the sound. You'll hear that, uh, that uh, nitrogen. You can hear it there. It's pretty unique. My wife, who's not, normally not a beer drinker, she actually likes this. This is very creamy. Now, the, the best way I can e explain this to you 
if you've never tried these nitrogen beers, it's very similar to like a Guinness. If you ever had a Guinness, it's got that same consistency, very thick, but creamy. This is kind of like a Guinness, except it's not dark. It's not a stout beer. Now look at the glass here. You can see on the bottom, you see how these bubbles, they kind of seem to be working backwards. They're coming from the top of the head and they're working their way down. And you'll see as it does that, the beer is slowly starting to turn and to look like a normal beer. And you can see that, that head, it's got a very creamy and smooth head on it. I've had these before, they're pretty tasty. They do make two additional ones. They make one that's called a Nitro IPA, Indian Pale Ale. And they also make one called a coffee stout, which I've never tried either one of them. This one I really like because it's light, it's refreshing, it's 5.5% alcohol. So thanks for watching my video and here's to some delicious chicken in a few hours. Mm. Very tasty. You could taste orange and wheat. It's very smooth and refreshing and very gulp gulpable, if that's a word. Uh, chuggable, I guess I should say. It's a, a beer you can easily drink a lot of, especially on a hot day, because it's very smooth. It doesn't even taste very alcoholic, to be honest with you. But it's absolutely delicious. So I highly recommend it. They sell them in these four packs. Uh, you'll notice the can's bigger than a normal can. It's a 15 ounce can. And the reason they do that is because they want to allow enough room in the can to facilitate that restrictor plate. And so they make the can a couple ounces bigger, so it equals a full pint when you pour it. So Samuel Adams Nitro White Ale. I'm gonna finish uh, enjoying this beer here. I'm also gonna go fire up the smoker and we'll be back in a second when I pull the chickens out and we'll start the next step. All right, guys, I've already got one chicken on the beer can holder, the second one here. Now I'm just using a very basic topping of garlic powder and black pepper. You can use whatever type of dry rub you want. My only word of caution would be most dry rubs uh, have a lot of salt. Their first or second ingredient is salt. And you, we've had these chickens soaking for 48 hours in a salt brine solution. So a lot of the meat has already absorbed the salt. It's already going to have some salt in the meat. So the last thing you really want to do is, you know, cover it in a thick layer of a salty dry rub. It's just going to make it way too salty. So I just put a little black pepper. A little, little garlic powder just to add a little flavor, and that's all you need. Now, these beer can holders, you can pick these up at the, at the store. They're pretty inexpensive. I know there's a lot of controversy over them. The theory is, you know, you open up a beer can, you, you break it open like so, you pour half the beer out, and as it cooks, the moisture from the beer is supposed to keep the chicken juicy from the inside so it doesn't dry out. Some people say that's simply not the case. But in either case, I still like using them. And the main reason I like using them is because look at how nice they sit here. They look beautiful when you put them in the smoker. Instead of having the chicken laying against the grate like this, where you're not getting the full smoke to adhere to the backside of the chicken because it's laying flat on the surface, you could stick it like this where smoke can kind of attack it from all angles. So I still like the smoke with them. I still leave some liquid in there. I know some people tell me I'm nuts. I think it does actually make the chicken taste a little bit better, but you know, I think it at least makes it easier for me to smoke. The only downside is when the chickens are done and you're taking them off the smoker, it's real difficult sometimes because you got a half a beer can in there full of very hot liquid and you gotta be very careful. So anyway, these chickens are ready to go. I fired up the smoker around 10 minutes ago. <clears throat> I'll meet you outside when we put these in and I'll show you the next step. All right, guys, here we are at the smoker. You can see we just uh, put the chickens in. I got both of them here. I got the water pan full of nice warm water. I got a drip pan underneath the chickens because it's going to drip some fat and juices and stuff. You don't want to cause, cause any kind of a fire. And the smoke <coughs> is starting to bellow out some smoke. So I'm going to set it at 225. I'm going to let these go for a couple hours. Uh, they will be done when the thermometer reaches 165 degrees in the thickest part of the thigh. What I'm doing right now is I got my alarm to go off at 155. So hopefully that'll be happening within the next couple hours. Once it hits 155, I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna crank it up full blast. Probably bring it up to maybe 300, 325, 
And what that's going to do that last few minutes, maybe half hour, 45 minutes at that higher temperature, is going to really crisp up the skin a little bit. But from the first part, I want to slow down the process because I want that chicken to be able to absorb some smoke. So I got my thermometer in the thickest part of the thigh and the bird on the left there. I got my handy dandy alarm here that's going to go off. So now I can go inside, enjoy a cold beverage, and we'll be back in a, in a couple hours and when these things uh, are ready to be taken off the smoker. See you then. Hey guys, here we are. It got really dark on me quick. These have been in here around three hours. I did crank it up. It's at around 325 right now. And uh, we are at a temperature of 156. So... Uh, we're almost there, but uh, wanted to show a picture how these are looking right now. Let me just open up real quick. I can take a look. Oh man, they look good. Looking good. All right, man, we'll be back later. Probably gonna have to wait till we get these inside. It's too dark out here. I'm using a flashlight, <laughs> but uh, looking forward to this. All right, guys. We'll see you in a little bit. Hello guys, my daughter Ava Grace decided to join me. I just pulled these off the smoker. They look wonderful. They're uh, good, good as smoke. Yeah, they they smell like smoke. Uh, man, they smell wonderful. And they're reading 165 in the thickest part of the, of the thigh. So these are done. I'm going to take them off the beer can holders, tent them with foil. We're going to let them rest for around 20, 25 minutes before we slice into them. So we'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> when we're ready to slice these. All right, guys, I cut off the leg here. You can see already that the meat is much pink, the more pink than you would think. That's we're because of the... Cut the things we are cutting. Yeah, yeah. You want to come see him, Grace? <laughs> okay. She wants it. Yeah, she does want it. So let me cut into the breast here. Now, the breast isn't supposed to be quite... Uh, you know, pink in color, it still looks traditional, but it's supposed to have a little bit of a different taste. <laughs> I've never tried it. They say like if you do, a, <laughs> you, they say if you do a turkey or something, it takes on like a hammy flavor. Oh, you can see right away how juicy. Wow. <laughs> oh, let me try a piece. Oh no, it's a piece. Oh my goodness. Hang on. I gotta give a piece to my wife, Monica. Who's choreography? <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Absolutely delicious. That is the best chicken I have ever had. It tastes like deli chicken you would get at like a deli, like a... A fat, thin slice. Yeah, a, Jew a Jewish deli. You know, you get like a turkey sandwich. Boy, that curing uh, solution definitely gives it a great flavor. I'll slice this up and we'll be back in a second. We'll see how my son likes it. All right, guys, here I am with my son, Kyle and Ava Grace. Kyle, please try some. Tell me what you think. Be honest. Yeah. We'll try, and, try and before, before I tr um, try this, I, by the way, I helped him with this. <laughs> yes, you um, did. It, it took a very long time. I was literally playing my PlayStation back there and I would set this timer behind him like for 10 to 15 minutes and I beep, I brought out with my spare socks on and okay. I go check the chicken. Yeah, I told him to check and, and make sure it was my, smoking. And me and my mom before the video, we were just craving it. You're like, stop okay, eating okay. it. We it's have to eat so much video. Ava Grace, so what anyways, do you have, hang on, what do you have to say, Ava Grace? Smoke chicken, smoke chicken. Smoke? Wait for chicken. <laughs> oh, you like smoked chicken? Okay, Kyle, try a piece. Try this piece and tell me what you say. Say to the, say to the camera. already tried this, by the way. Okay, but tell me. Try another piece. You come here, try a piece, Mom. Um, let me see. I mean, it's really good. I mean, smoked chicken. I mean, I don't know how to explain this. That is smoked and cured. I mean, it's very good. I've never experienced this. This is so. It's like one of the best chickens I think I've ever tried in my yeah. life. And the dark meat, especially, takes, I don't even on, like dark meat. takes on that pink cue. It seems like it's soaking up the cure more, but man, is it delicious. No, I only me like white meat, mom, normally. Me and my mom only like white meat. Dad likes more of a darkish meat. So, um, but I'm, we're not, I'm not a big fan of dark meat, but it is still pretty good. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. 
Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe. Watch my other smoking videos. Bye. Bye. Say goodbye, Emma Grace. And you might even bye. find her bye. on your own channel. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.